Lots of really interesting characters yeah. there. Lots of interesting thoughts going to come out of that. Mm -hmm. oh, you're watching Breakfast from BBC News. We're going to get some thoughts from the newspapers. Former newspaper editor Phil Hall is here. To good, morning. Us, good morning. To tell us what's caught his eye. We'll talk to you in just a moment. We'll whiz through the front pages um, first, shall we? Yeah, let's have a look at the front page of the Times to start with a picture there of one of the victims of the shooting in Oregon. And their top story is the fact that Michael Gove is planning a new revolution in which he's uh, going to sell off some prisons. Let's take a look at the Telegraph. Its top story is that Britain will vote no if the EU does not back down. Um, this is a warning from Philip Hammond, who's saying that unless Brussels cedes substantial and irreversible reforms, British people will vote to leave the EU. Uh, the Independent Saturday edition has a quote from a top official in the Foreign Office who apparently has said that human rights are now a lower priority for the UK than, than trade as far as foreign negotiations are concerned. Now, you may be aware that on Monday, um, stores can now charge a five-pence levy on plastic bags. And this has led to the Daily Mail taking a look at fines for dropping litter. And the Mirror's front page goes with a, a follow-up to that uh, dreadful shooting in Oregon uh, and the fact that uh, the man who's believed to have been responsible for it, Chris Harper Mercer, was born in the UK uh, and has British family. Um, Phil, you're taking a look at post-election David Cameron and whether or not he's doing enough. And obviously we've seen there's been a lot of attention surrounding Jeremy Corbyn and how he's trying to change politics in his view. But a couple of editorials taking a look at how well, what David Cameron is doing and if he's using this chance, his re-election, to make history. I think that's the point. I think Jeremy Corbyn's been getting all the attention. And what these two, both Conservative supporting papers, The Sun and The Mail, are saying that David Cameron's taken his eye off the ball metaphorically put his feet up and really hasn't got on with the job and both are saying that this is a huge opportunity, a remarkable victory he had in May, he should have acted sooner and started moving things forward. They're talking for instance about Michael Gove's education changes, the infrastructure changes, Heathrow uh, runway 5 is it I think or runway 6, the new Heathrow runway, he hasn't taken the decisions and made it happen and their view is that he's looking there thinking that politically he's very comfortable because the Labour Party's in disarray and really he's got to start making things happen. It's the third runway. You're third getting runway. mixed up with the terminals because there are five terminals, terminals well at Heathrow. Yeah, it's the third runway. Third but, runway. But, but, you know, there is a point. It's interesting that I think in, in the recent weeks that Her Majesty's press have almost become the opposition because Her while Harriet Harman's done her best, they're not really coordinated and, and together. So it's, be, it's been very much the medium. Very often the Conservative supporting papers have been criticising David Cameron. This story in the Times is extraordinary, isn't it? Um, I mean, a lot of parents, we've, we've covered the fact in the past that parents are often getting a tutor to help their kids with exams. But this takes that to a whole new level, doesn't it? Yeah, and this is, this is actually at university. So you, you sort of, you know, you feel, and, and at Oxford and Cambridge, you feel you've got the brightest students at these universities, and yet parents are now spending huge sums of money on private tuition. Look at that, nearly half a million pounds half on a, a tutor. Half a million pounds. And the, and, the, and the story here, which I think is a, is, is a story for anyone, is it, it was a father who decided that he wanted his daughter to study business, she wanted to do English, and he spent the money to drive her to do what he wanted her to do. She got a degree, but then went in a completely different direction to what he wanted anyway. But these, you do see these obsessive parents who are doing this for themselves, not for their children. And rather than letting their children develop and grow and go, go where they want to, you've got uh, overbearing parents really pushing um, children in the direction they want. It's going to be interesting to talk to that family in about 10 years' time, <laughs> isn't it? Um, the Guardian's launched a campaign or an appeal um, to get people talking about life with the disability or the condition endometriosis and some quite high profile people have been talking about their experiences. This uh, piece by Una King is really harrowing. You know, throughout my career working in different places, you hear from time to time, oh, you know, that lady's off, it's period pains, it's nothing. And then you read the real sort of detail of what happens with end endometriosis. Una King is talking about how she was in absolute agony. She said it was like the second level of giving birth once a month. Very, very hard for her to, to function, excruciating, debilitating pain. She said she passed out um, she passed in a out. One, shopping centre. One stage she was collapsed. working in Belgium and a doctor felt so um, in sympathy with her that she was labelled disabled because she just couldn't work for one week in, in the month. And, and a doctor over here gave her a, a contraceptive pill. And, if, and her husband was saying, hold on a minute, that increases your risk to cancer by 30%. It just, it, there doesn't seem to be a treatment or a proper 
um, understanding of how serious it is yeah and she's actually uh, this doctor you were talking about in Belgium actually classed classified her as disabled yes. due to endometriosis. unable to work and she said constantly and, and you know people have been very sim sympathetic both male and female MPs covering up for her but she'd be coming to do a speech she would feel the pain and she just couldn't do it so it's a it's really good that this 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 uh, issue is being raised I think Story here in the, the mirror following up, remember the, uh, the on-pitch spat between Jose Mourinho and uh, one of the Chelsea club doctors. Uh, the doctor then left the club following that. And the mirror, what are they saying here? Well, it's astonishing. I, I've, I've never heard anything like it, really. You've got the, the FA <clears throat> saying they have cleared Jose Mourinho doing no wrong. As far as they're concerned, he acted within his powers, but they haven't spoken to Dr. Eva, so they've not asked the other side of the story. So all they've got is a Chelsea version of what happened and nothing from, from, from the person who's seen by, by the public as a, as a victim. And seen by the public, I mean, seen by the public all over the world, because yes. this got so much it's attention. Massive, you'd have, massive you'd have thought story. they'd have looked at both sides. Obviously, we haven't uh, investigated that ourselves, but yeah. Quick word on the rugby. Can't ignore the rugby. Oh, what a lovely story this is. I mean, how have we missed this story? This lady, uh, Mary Tutel, for the past 30 years, she's 87 years old. She's the unofficial mascot. You've got to go and find her, guys, because I would love to hear her speak. For the last 30 years, she, she goes into the England dressing room before a game and she gives the England captain a rose and a letter. Now, the important thing is she missed the Wales game. And really? so whenever she's gone in there before, they see it as a, a good luck omen. It started, it started uh, you know, 25 years ago with Will Carling. The, the important thing is, is she going to be there tonight? She's going to be there okay, tonight. Do you know, good. I'll tell you what else as well. She's been invited as a VIP guest and she's going to be escorted by Bill Beaumont, one of her favourite former one captains. And we're giants. talking to Bill oh, later in the programme. Great. So we'll, we'll try to get a word on her from Bill later on. Phil, we're going to talk to you Thank shortly. You. Thanks. We'll have the headlines for you in a moment. Do stay with us.